Welcome to Was It Something I Said, the panel show that's all about everything anyone's ever said ever, so long as they're famous. As Churchill stated in 1942, this is not the end, it is not even the beginning of the end, but it is perhaps the end of the beginning. This, in contrast, is not even the end of the beginning, but it is perhaps the middle of the beginning of the beginning. I tell a lie, that was the end of the beginning. <laughs> On Richard Iwadi's team is old dog comedian Jason Manford, and on Mickey Flanagan's team is new trick, but not in the prosy sense, other comedian Ramesh Ranganathan. <laughs> and here to read our quotations is a writer and presenter who's been quoted as saying her blonde-haired husband isn't really her type, adding, I always like these broody, sulky, tortured men in the corner. So, for a while, Abu Qatada was in the frame. <laughs> Please welcome journalist and broadcaster, Mariella Frostrup. <laughs> so, Mariella, this is a show about quotations. Do you have any favourites? Uh, yeah, I quite like the opening line of, of Herzog by Saul Bellow. If I'm out of my mind, it's all right with me. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? Well, I find it makes sense, don't yeah. you? No? Yeah, well, I think many people who are out of their mind probably wish they weren't. <laughs> Maybe the definition of sanity is being mad in a way you don't mind. I think the definition of sanity is to embrace your insanity, which is why I particularly like that opening line. Yeah. But you're Norwegian, aren't you? Yeah, half. Ah, uh, I'm half. half Norwegian. Are you? Yeah. Which half? Top half. <laughs> OK. Maybe we can transform. <laughs> or amalgamate. Yeah. Gosh, that's very forward, but... Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amalgamate is a very polite word. <laughs> or yeah. do you mind well, if we slip off now, David? And, and go off and, you know... Create a full Norwegian. Yeah. Amalgamate. Wow. <laughs> wow. It, it's got very frank. Very yeah. cool. <laughs> but, anyway, our first round is called threesomes, and I can guarantee... <laughs> Jason is not coming. <laughs> Jason is not welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, our first round is called threesomes, <laughs> and I can guarantee that it's going to be as exciting as a sexual threesome. <laughs> That's if you're really into a quiz about quotations and you can pretty much take or leave sex these days. <laughs> I'm going to give both teams a quotation and they have to work out which of three well-known figures said it. You can also play along at home by following at something I said on Twitter to unlock extra content. The theme of this week's threesome is hotels. And can we have the first quotation, please, Mariella? I used to collect all these animals. We used to have to smuggle them into the rooms. We put pythons and anacondas in sacks under our beds. In a moment, I'll give you three famous faces to choose from, but before that, what do you make of this quotation? Is it... Noah? <laughs> <laughs> it rather reduces the, the, the flood to just a, yeah. a localised flood in their flat. So they have to move <laughs> briefly into a hotel. And also, sometimes before you go on a long trip, you do want to stay in a hotel near the ferry, you know, like a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I should narrow down your options. Was it rock star Alice Cooper, Justin Bieber, who I believe is some kind of singer, <laughs> or, or David Attenborough? Thinking not Bieber, because why would he, he... He doesn't need snakes and anacondas, does he? He needs a watch more than anything. Yeah. Uh, How many hours late was he for that gig at Wembley? Three, I is think. Yeah. Three yeah. hours, yeah. He, you know, I was going crazy. I, was going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's um, Attenborough. Because, like, if, if Attenborough come in the hotel and he had a lot of animals with him, you'd just go, ah, he probably knows what he's doing. You know, I, I met Alice Cooper. Did he's, you? He's not as upset with his name as you would think. But, uh, <laughs> the, and he, after the show, he said, uh, I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to have a full fat Coke. Oh, right. That's how rock and roll he is. I didn't realise there was so much fat in drugs. I thought it was one of the plus things that you might lose weight. <laughs> I'll have the full I'm, fat, Charlie. I'm going to have, really, have some really buttery heroin. <laughs> I think we... Should we go for Alice? I reckon Alice. You reckon Alice? And what do you reckon? I mean, let's not be bullied into making a poor choice. I mean, quite... We're bigger than that. <laughs> um, <laughs> you might be. I'm going to go David Attenborough. 
I think all these animals is not a phrase that... Yeah, it does sound a little bit yeah. vague. I don't think David you Attenborough know, goes, and here we are in front of all these fucking animals. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, let's go with your, your choice, then. OK. All right, Alice, Alice Cooper, eight. and if it's Alice right... Choice. We're, we're going Alice Thank Cooper. You. Both teams going Alice Cooper. Well, the answer is David Attenborough. <laughs> His, his, his idiom has absolutely let me down, and not for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, Attenborough spent the earlier part of his career travelling the world collecting animals for London Zoo, about which he subsequently expressed regret, saying, I used to go along, chase a giant anteater and pull it by the tail so we could film it. I'm sorry about that sort of thing, but those were different days. Yeah. <laughs> That's He's... what all those DJs say now, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> Attenborough's snakes went under the hotel bed, as he said, but what did he say went in the bath? Piss. <clears throat> no. There would be no need to piss in the bath, not unless you were keeping a tortoise in the loo. <laughs> he said he put armadillos in the bath. <laughs> Genuinely, it seems like early on in his career, David Attenborough went around bagging animals. Just he went <laughs> to abroad, found an animal, grabbed it, shoved it in a I bag. Think, I think it's called poaching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know whether he cooked them or not, to be honest. But, uh, <laughs> stealing them and oh, then yes. going on and making programmes about how there aren't any animals left in the wild. Well, <laughs> it's not very surprising. <laughs> Can you steal an armadillo? Who would, you, who would possess it? He's, he's stolen them from us all, like people who... Pick flowers from a roundabout. I've never seen any flowers on a roundabout because it's in the north. It's just surrounded by happy birthday Sandra signs on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> <Sandra Beshies. laughs> happy 24th, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Sandra Beshies. Happy twenty fourth, Grandma. Mariella, can we have our next quotation on the subject of hotels, please? Absolutely. I've picked up all sorts of things in hotels: fleas, lice, tapeworm. <laughs> Is this Lenny Henry. <laughs> 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 no, it, it is one of David Attenborough, Justin Bieber and Alice oh, right. Cooper once again. I don't think it's David Attenborough. It's not the sort of thing you would say on Parkinson, is it? <laughs> the urban legend about tapeworms is horrendous, isn't it? The, the one way to get rid of it... Oh, don't. You, you pull your pants down and then you just yeah, crouch right. over <laughs> some food and it just crawls out. Oh, I fancy that now. And just crawls out and has a bit yeah. of food. <laughs> I saw yeah, a bloke doing that in Greg's the other day. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird because it's sort of said in a way that, you know, like comedians, you know, we often like do things in three, don't we? So, like, we go two normal things mm. and the last one's a joke. They're just three normal things, like, but it sounds like fleas, lice, tapeworm. You got, I know yeah. they're all the same. There's no, there's no joke there. That's, <laughs> that's like one of my joke. jokes. That's, that's, that's a way, sentence. Yeah, the way I like to tell a joke <laughs> is for there to be no surprises within it. <laughs> or or, or humour. <laughs> uh, I think that's quite trad. You know, actually trying to say something amusing no. within the joke. Weird. It's actually kind of pathetic and a bit <laughs> needy. <laughs> I'm regretting those tickets for your arena tour. Yeah. <laughs> So, Jason and Richard, who, who are you leaning towards? I think it might be David Attenborough. I think it's Alice Cooper this time. Oh. <laughs> uh, this is getting pretty yeah. awkward. You say tomato. You also say tomato. Well, at least you can agree on something. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to go Attenborough. Yes. They're saying Attenborough. Yes. I don't think it's Bieber because... There's no way he's staying in a hotel where you can get fleas. I think would, it's, yeah, I think I think it's, it's Should we go for Atomber? We think it's Atomber because, you know, it's the sort of thing that would happen to him in some far-flung oh. hotel. Yeah. OK, well, the answer is... David Attenborough! Yeah. <laughs> Just his bad luck to catch all those off one hooker. <laughs> Now, the next round is called Keywords. I'm going to give our panellists keywords from a well-known quotation which they should know, and they have to try and work out the whole thing. So, for example, if we gave you the keywords not, tonight and Josephine, you'd know immediately that we'd pick too short a quotation for this round. <laughs> this is from a famous quotation by Neil Armstrong that you should all be familiar with. I'll award points to whichever team is closest to the exact wording. As your first clue, Mariella, can we have two keywords, please? Why, yes, sir. <laughs> Small and giant. 
And you're probably thinking, I know this one, <laughs> but I want the bit after the bit you think you know as well as the bit you think you know. What, can I come home now? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the people get this quote wrong, don't they, quite a lot, because he actually said, one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind, but everybody quotes it as one small step for man, because that's a better quote. You think it's better, one small step for... For man. Do you not think it's better? No, I think that's it's better a man. Well, that's what he said he said. I know, well, he's, he's right to say he said that, because that would have been but better he if he it? said that. <laughs> I don't know, I'm not saying whether or not he said that. What one I'm saying is one small step for a man, it does, one it giant leap for mankind, yeah. that, that that's means something. There's a distinction between a man and mankind, whereas one small step for man, man in that sense just means mankind. You're right. That's just, he's just contradicting himself. One small step for man, one giant leap for man. Well, which <laughs> the fuck <laughs> is it? <laughs> So, I'm going to be late for my next class. Can I go? <laughs> <laughs> There's a story which says one of the things he said when he was up there was, uh, good luck, Mr Gorski. And it was because when he was a kid, his neighbours were always arguing, the Gorskis. And one day he heard the, the bloke say, why can't you just, you know, give me a blowjob? Like, why can't you do this? just something I want, you know? And she said, you're not having a blowjob until the kid next door... Oh, you know, there's more chance of me if you get a blowjob than the kid next door walking on the moon. Yeah. <laughs> so is Good luck, Mr. Gorski. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it's true. I just I <laughs> like the fact that he might have worked hard <laughs> to become an astronaut <laughs> purely so his neighbour could get sucked off. That's... Um, can we have another keyword, please, Mariella? I don't key. know. I don't like the way this game's going. I don't like the turn it's taken. <laughs> There's not been one bloke joke about sex, you know, making fun of yourselves. It's yeah, all, but because they're not jokes, about they're, women not they're real. Blow jobs and That's hand right. jobs and blah blah blah. You know. We are our own jokes. Yeah. We yeah. Are. Well, <laughs> okay, I'll give you a keyword. No. Yes, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Right. You've got to listen carefully because yeah. it's very short. Okay. Mm. Toe. Toe. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to think what I can so do to redress the, the balance for womankind mm. and. I'm just not coming up with anything that I think will be that effective in this quiz. No, so just carry on as you were, then. Yeah. It's been oh. happening for centuries. Yes. To be honest, it was pretty optimistic of us to think that male chauvinism would end during this show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ambitious. Yeah, yes. Given. So now you've got the third key word. What do you think it is? Uh, one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. Oh, with fucking toe! Like, maybe... <laughs> yeah. maybe he might have hurt his maybe toe. Maybe yeah. Good answer. But not, probably not. Can they get even closer? Small step for a man, giant leap for mankind. One toe changes everything. You're going, oh, ow, my fucking toe. That's a my... <laughs> One toe changes everything. Yes. <laughs> OK, both plausible. Um, <laughs> Mariella, can we have the genuine quotation from Neil Armstrong, please? That's one small step for a man. One giant leap for mankind, and the the surface is fine and powdery. I can I can pick it up loosely with my toe. <laughs> the man's wearing great big boots. Yeah. He's hardly got a pair of flip tops yeah. on. How, how, is he, how is he feeling the earth? He's thought, oh, I'll, I'll risk death just to rub my toes in the dirt. For a <laughs> There's a lot of argument out of, over whether or not he said the missing A. Earth heard that's one small step for man, mm. one giant leap for mankind. Armstrong always insisted he'd said that's one small step for a man, well, but in 1999 admitted that he could not hear it either in audio recordings of the event, and it was perhaps wiped out by transmission static. This has been both supported and rejected by various audio analysts. So the truth is, we don't quite know what he said, but I agree with you, it's very unclear what he's going on about with his toe. <laughs> For years later, people were meeting Neil Armstrong and thinking, oh, he's going to have something really wise to say, and walking away going, he's a bit thick, weren't he? <laughs> <laughs> so, at the end of the round, the teams are tied. Over the break, see if you can complete this quotation from famous playboy Hugh Hefner. My best pickup line is what? Tweet your answer to at something I said and we'll see you in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Welcome back to Was It Something I Said? Before the break, we asked you to complete this quotation from Hugh Hefner. My best pickup line is what? You're under contract to me. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to touch my rabbit? 
<laughs> you want to play the game, then? <laughs> this is only going to happen once, I assure you. Yeah. <laughs> it, and only then, because I've taken the right tablets. <laughs> Do you want to be in Playboy? Because I know a Playboy who wants to be in you. <laughs> I, I think I know the answer to this. You think you know I, the answer? I, I think it is. My best pickup line is, I am Hugh Hefner. Mariella, can we have the full quotation, please? My best pickup line is, my name is Hugh Hefner. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely get the point there. What does Hefner's third wife, Crystal, say about Hef's naked body? Fucking hell. <laughs> She might, uh, if she'd seen it. She says, he doesn't really take off his clothes. I've never seen Hef naked. Oh, it's a sight weird. too terrible for human eyes. <laughs> Up next is a round called What Are They Talking About? You're going to hear a quote that's been taken out of context and what I want to know is what the person is talking about. OK, here's one from Michael Jackson. Can we have the quote, please, Marianne? They run around and they help me clean the room. They help me dust. They do the windows. Motorised dusters. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of women would kill for a motorised duster. See, when you're talking about the cliché, Marianne... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel... Uh, um, is he talking about the other Jacksons? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get that dust, Tito! <laughs> Latoya, you missed a bit! <laughs> Is it the first draft for the lyrics to Thriller? <laughs> staff, my staff, the staff Is that I employ. About, like monkeys and bubbles and stuff like that. Because where, where the quote is leading us all to is something we don't want to say about a dead man. Makes it sound like there's little children running around his house. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> He, he, really wouldn't like to honest, with that. he wouldn't be the dead man of whom that is now most said, would he? <laughs> <laughs> that title has been lost. <laughs> that title has been lost to Britain. <laughs> Can I just raise one issue about the face? Did he not at any point wake up and look in the mirror and go to the surgeon, are you having a fucking laugh? <laughs> Why would you go to a surgeon and say, could you make me hideous? Could you make me... <laughs> well, you've answered basically monkeys. Um, what's your answer? I think we should just say working class people. Working class people. <laughs> Marianne, can we have the, the full quotation, please? I come home to my dear or my chimps and I can hug them. They run around and they help me clean the room. They help me dust. They do the windows. <laughs> Well done. It's deer and chimps. <laughs> yes, Jackson had chimps cleaning windows, chimps doing the dusting, and bubbles to help him relax in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> Our next round is the Was It Something I Said round, in which each team has to work out who said the following quotations. It'll be from someone on the show tonight or from our virtual guest, Jessie J. Jessie J shaved her head for comic relief, saying, if it saves lives, it's worth it adding, it's hair, it will grow back. Or, as a similarly charitable Bruce Forsyth said, I'll just buy another one. <laughs> OK, Richard's team, you're up first. Mariella, can we have our first quotation, please? I sort of kissed a girl for the first time in a sixth form play. I don't know if it counts because it was artistically justified, but our lips definitely touched. So, who said that? Was it Mickey, Ramesh, Mariella, me or Jesse J? David. <laughs> without a shadow. David. What do you mean, David, without a shadow? Do you think I'm a vampire? No, you're... Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, yeah. so, I sort of kissed... I mean, you either kiss or you, or you don't, do you? I mean, sort of kissed? So that's what makes me think it's someone like David. <laughs> <laughs> Can I take no, this no, I mean no, I can I take this opportunity as as a captain, yeah. one nerd <laughs> to another, to defend David? Yeah, sure, if you want. Sort of is good enough. <laughs> <laughs> 
sort of, sort of happens, and it's a bloody relief. <laughs> so I think it's David. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK, fine. Yeah, yeah well, it is me, bit. so... Um, <laughs> Now we know it's you, you can tell us what sort of kiss means. Well, it was, it was, I kissed a girl on the lips in a play, and I thought, oh, does this mean I actually kissed a girl properly on the lips? Well, no, it doesn't. It was in a story written by someone else. She had to. <laughs> <laughs> next up, it's Mickey's team. And we have the next quote, please. My mother celebrated my sister's birthday on the wrong date for a decade. Oh, who said that? Was it Richard, Jason, Mariella, me or Jesse J? It's not me, because I wouldn't say mother i I'm not... I would say me mum. Don't you know me, start so. this now. You say me we... mother. Me mother. mother. Me mother. <laughs> me mother. I'm sorry. You had a me... stroke? I do... <laughs> 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 I've seen the advert. That's sign number one. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I say mother. I say mother. 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 That's great. All Northern people say mother. It sort of indicates a little bit of cruelty. Yeah. Because the mother's not being corrected. For a decade. <laughs> what family is this? Oh, no. just... It's not necessarily vindictiveness. It could be you know, oh, yeah, could, the opportunity to correct the mother may never have arisen. I think it, I think this is something what Maria Martin said. All right, so I think it's Mariella. Yep. I think we're going for Mariella. You're right. Oh, it was yeah. Mariella. It was me. Yeah. How did that happen? Single mother, five children, details. How was the mistake discovered? The birth certificate. Pulled out of a cupboard when we were moving, and oh my oh god! god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually eleven. <laughs> she was a whole year out. Yeah, well, you would be, wouldn't you? But did nobody sit, like early on when this, like, when she was going to school and, and stuff like that? Did that not come up? She was just in the wrong year. It's it's Ireland, 1970s. What can I tell you? Wow. So well, the day I tell you what, worst <laughs> things so, were happening. So, <laughs> yeah. so two days after she was born, your mum thought she was a year and two days. <laughs> And a quick look at the scores tells me this week's winners are Richard and Jason. <laughs> Thank you to Mickey and Ramesh, Richard and Jason, and to our guest narrator, Mariella Froststrap. And we leave you with the words of Barbara Streisand. Success to me is having ten honeydew melons and eating only the top half of each slice. Well, I say, fuck you, Barbara. <laughs> Success to me is a diamond-encrusted top hat and a robot butler. <laughs> Good night. Matt Berry in his very own show, sublime and ridiculous and very, very funny. Toast of London is next on Fourth.